G'day guys, long time no see. Uh, we've got a vehicle in today. It's a manual VZ Commodore. I think 2006. It's a 3.6 litre. It's only got 72,000 kilometres on the clock. It's got a very strange uh, problem. So basically, intermittently, it will log a misfire code and go into limp, uh, limp mode. Um, but it will only misfire on uh, the number one bank so it will be any combination of one two or three um, misfire on cylinder one misfire on cylinder three or misfire on cylinder five plus a random misfire code and it will do that intermittently um, and what will happen is that if you're running and it's in limp mode uh, because it's shut the well it's shut the injector off for the misfiring cylinder if you clear the codes it'll run sweet straight away turn the injector back on no dramas so i've had a quick look at this already uh yesterday just with the scan tool absolutely nothing stands out at all um, after speaking to the customer uh, he said um, that before coming to us it's already He's already changed all the coils, all the spark plugs, all the injectors, the manifold gasket, the air and fuel filter, and the oil pressure sensor. So, interesting. So, let's get it back inside. Uh, look, my theory is it's it must be counting up misfires on those cylinders, and as soon as it gets to the threshold, it's shutting the injector off. And that's why clearing the code, it resets that and puts the injector back on. Why is it only misfiring on one bank? So the only thing that I noticed was there's a slight discrepancy in fuel trims between banks and the injectors uh, millisecond wise are staying on a little bit longer on bank one. So let's go back inside and see if there's anything else that stands out and then make a decision on what we need to do from there. So we've just started misfiring already. Uh, wanted to, what I wanted to show you is that uh, apparently on these when there's a you probably can't see it you can probably see right there there's a 10 mil bolt just on the side of the head that's the earth for the ignition coils and apparently uh, that can be a bad connection and that can cause the same fault I just checked that um, with a multimeter um, voltage drop under load and there's 20 millivolts so nothing that I'll consider to be a fault so it's definitely not that in the next step is we'll just have a look at a bit of live data and then we'll make a decision on where we go next so there you go this is what's happening at this moment in time um, but like I said to you I did have a quick look at this yesterday with live data I'll get you back into live data and show you what I thought was a little bit of an abnormality something to go for possibly Here's one thing that I thought was odd. If you look at the RPM, 650 RPM and the mass airflow, so we're down towards the three-ish grams per second um, with a known good that we found on TAT. Uh, the vehicle was running at 600 RPM, so 50 RPM less, but it had 3.8 grams per second. So do we have low airflow here? Uh, let's get back out and go to fuel trims and I'll get you back up when we get fuel trims up So have a look at that bank one total fuel trim negative five percent Bank two total fuel trim positive six percent complete opposites um, Is that something to go by do we have an airflow discrepancy do we, do we have a partially blocked catalytic converter or something like that? Um, is this really counting misfires is it, is it falsely counting misfires? There's a couple of things to consider here. Um, so, yeah, bear with me and I'll come up with the next test. Okay, the trusty old thermal imager. Let's go, left bank. Let me get up on the screen. What do we got? At the front of the cat, we've got two, hang on. We've got 200, at the front of the cat. What do we got at the back of the cat? 200 driver's bank front of the cat 200 back of the cat 180 something hmm what do you think about that I didn't show you the test but I had the WPS 500 in it I just took out uh, number 5 um, spark plug and uh, what we're doing is we're just at the 
can see on the transducer, as you can see, between 0.1 and 0.2 um, bar, uh, which is about you know 1.5 to 3 psi. Is it enough to start counting misfires at idle? I don't know, and it's odd because it goes, it's, yeah, it's, it's just really weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to back off the cat bolts at the headers and just see if that makes a difference to the more test, relative compression, two second test before we go up in the air. Every second cylinder at the start, crank it, low, low, mm, hard to tell from hash, low, low, bit of hash but probably low, bit of hash, probably low. Firing order on this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So every second cylinder is going to be that odd bank, which we're getting misfire codes for. So that's a little bit interesting. Anyway, let's go up and do that test. Uh, hopefully, we can just unbolt this cat. We are unbolted at the moment, as you can tell by the engine sound. Uh, our math reading is a little bit higher. The engine, mm, it's really hard to tell whether it's running a little bit better or it's as rough as idling as it was before just because of the sound, but we're just gonna let this run for a while. Well, that didn't take long, straight to misfiring. Let's see what the code is. We can only guess what it's gonna be, probably exactly the same as it was before. Yeah, I'm not worried about that coil. Misfire detected. All right, on to the next test. All right, back together. Uh, the plan is next thing I want to do is I want to check physical cam timing. Now these things are really good for setting cam timing codes, but let's be honest, if we're thinking about what can affect one bank separately to the other bank, there's really not much else it could be. A mechanical issue or a blocked exhaust, and I don't think the exhaust is blocked enough to make a difference or cause it to count misfires. Um, so I want to check cam timing next. I want to get the authority from the customer and obviously want to jump on TANS to make sure we've got a known good to compare it to first because a uh, camera crank correlation uh, without a known good is good for nothing. All right, we've got the cam crank correlation set up. Um, unfortunately, the problem is, is that we've only got one cam sensor per bank on these older 3.6 engines. Obviously it's quad cam, but we've only got um, one sensor for each uh, intake cam. Um, we've got the crank sensor fitted underneath the car. As you can see, we've got the wiring going down there. Uh, I've already done the timing test, and I've also got a known good on the screen. As you can see here, this is ours on the right. Everything pretty much lines up exactly the same with the known good. So I am relatively comfortable that the timing is good that's not saying that there's an issue, not an issue with the exhaust cam on either of these, but without pulling the timing cover off, we're not going to know. So one more thing before we decide how far we go. Um, I've just picked up the eScope uh, e 8 channel uh, from Automotive Test Solutions. I just got that from Oswide Tools, so I'll be using that in the next video coming up. But they do have a CKP uh, patented CKP misfire detector. So I'm curious, I'm going to connect this up, I'm going to get uh, one channel on the crank sensor, one channel on the sink on number one ignition coil, and we're going to run it and see, is it actually registering misfires? Is the computer sensing there's misfires coming from these rear cylinders, or is there not? If there isn't, there's a chance this ECU could be faulty. If there is registering misfires, then clearly we're missing something here and then we're going to look further down the track. But I'm going to connect that up and I'm going to see if that actually works and how well this works on this. Alright, so we've got the e-scope set up. I've already done the test. Check it out. 100% misfiring. Mostly number 5, but also number 1 and number 3. So clearly the ECU is actually reporting what is going on. Sorry, I should have showed you. Um, how this works. So obviously we connect up the um, crank position sensor, we connect up an, an ignition sink, we put the firing order in, um, we can set our sensitivity levels, I've already done that. You'll see that when I stop and analyse this, it only records five seconds, the last five seconds. Basically once we've clicked the cord, which I just did, I'll stop it, and then you'll see it says analysing data down there. In a minute it will reload the graph, 
um, but then I need to go back and change the misfire falling sensitivity which I don't know how to save yet because it keeps reverting to 180 um, but you'll see in a sec once that loads the data it'll come up with that screen um, no misfires detected because the sensitivity is not set right but if I go back into tools I can change that sensitivity to 90 and then reset it and as you can see 12, 9, 19 so you can see there I'll try and see if I can zoom in that's what we're seeing intermittently every now and then um, and, and yeah to be honest with you I'm not full bottle on interpreting this but obviously as you can see here that one doesn't go up enough number five once again number five number one that's what we're looking at we're looking at we're looking at the rise and obviously the speed of the crankshaft there's number one there's number five so uh, yeah, definitely something funky going on here. But let me just jump over to the uh, relative compression and see what we get. All right, here's the results. So now that I've got a proper sync on it, we can see the compression's low. We've got number one trigger here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five's the worst, three's low. Uh, we've, definitely got, um, we've definitely got an issue there. So there's a mechanical fault with this engine. As you can see, number five is actually probably worse here, but I wonder if it just changes because the, the one I did the other day looked like uh, all the odd ones were a little bit low. So I just wonder if it's got some valve sealing issues or, or something like that. It's only got 70,000 Ks on, on the clock, which is very, very weird. So um, like I said, I did the uh, relative compression the other day and it didn't look... Um, as abnormal as I thought it would be or enough or low enough to actually um, cause misfire codes because we see VZ you know 3.6 chains uh, stretch all the time and run fine and not log misfire codes so why would this one but clearly by looking at that now it looks like it's gotten way worse so I dare say there might be an intermittent uh, mechanical issue but regardless, we've got a mechanical issue going on, and that's, this is what's going on. This is what's causing our misfire codes. All right, guys, so the customer has decided they're probably going to pick this car up. They're probably going to look for a, a new engine. I don't think they're going to get any further work done here, but I just wanted to explain a little bit better because I'm not sure if I um, explained it correctly at the start, but basically this, this car had a rough idle. Basically, it had a, had a light rough idle, was not misfiring at all, and that was the tricky part of powder. It wasn't a traditional misfire, but clearly, when we look at the um, CKP analyzer on the Escape 8, you can see the crank position sensor is definitely fluctuating in speed um, because of the low compression, and it's not enough to actually make it be a proper misfire, but it's enough to change the crankshaft speed deviation to register that the ECU is picking up a possible misfire. Um, but obviously not great enough to actually feel like a misfire, even though it does rough, you know, it does run a little bit rough. But that was the case, and that's why you know this one was a little bit trickier than than normal. And like I said, even if we did the relative compression test at the start, we still would have had to do all the other checks anyway, just to do our due diligence and make sure that there's no bank to bank related issues or anything like that. So um, overall, uh, pretty good, um, pretty good uh, outcome, I guess. Not for the customer, but, you know, at least we got them the answers that they needed after running around and spending a lot of money on all these other parts. So thanks for watching, guys, and if there's any update, I'll let you know.